This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Jacob, the perfume shrine of the fashion bunker. Thank you all for joining. Today we will be talking about my top five perfumes for the month of February. Before we get to it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on the tubes. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob all spelled together, uh, to get access to extra perks and help support the channel. This one as well as my main channel. You can also become a member on my main channel. I live stream every Saturday in this live stream is being uh, filmed live in front of a virtual audience. So we do have our co-chatters in the chats on the sidebar here. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Let's see if you guys <laughs> guess which five perfumes I'm going to be talking about now. And also let me know in the chats wh what are your favorite five. And of course, you guys as well, let me know in the comment section down below what your top five perfumes for the month of February 2022 are. Now, uh, also stay tuned, you know, if you are a tier two patron on my Patreon, um, as well as a tier two member on my main YouTube channel, because um, next Saturday I will be live streaming an exclusive pre-show where I go in depth behind the top five perfumes for the month of February. It's like a special um, psychological in-depth analysis of the five perfumes, which is an exclusive video to my uh, tier two members and patrons. So let's get to it. The first one in February uh, that I want to talk about is Gardenia. Now this one comes often in my selections lately. I have been obsessed with this fragrance for a while now. And I got to say, it has to do with the lockdown probably. It, and also to wear this in the dead of winter. You would think it makes no sense. It's such a floral fragrance, so summery. And yet, and yet here we are. Uh, it's it's giving me such a fascinating vibe uh, in winter. It's it's not sweet. It, you know, Chanel fragrances are always a little bit distant, a little bit arrogant. So it's not too sweet. It's it's not sweet at all, really. It has a little bit of a coconutty flavor to it. The eau de parfum. It's a meaty white floral. Uh, very, very fascinating. And it can be warm and cold. And so in winter months, it's fascinating to smell something that is kind of a warm smell, but also a cold smell. It It's really, really good. It doesn't make you sweat. You know, like sometimes in winter when you, when it's really cold outside, so you're dressed all super warm, but you're going shopping, then you enter a store, the store is overheated and you got your scarf on, your hat on, your jacket on, your sweater on, and you just start sweating like in a sauna and you can't take everything off because then you're all sweaty and sticky. And then like, before you know it, you're done shopping there, then you got to exit again and outside it's cold again. And then you feel all wet and sticky and you get cold terrible vibe and some perfumes give you that feeling like they're misplaced depending on it's like oh it's winter so let me use a warm fragrance then you spray it on and then you just feel obnoxious the whole day with it because it's just too much you thought you needed it because you thought it was going to warm you up but then when you really wear it you feel like oh no this was this ain't it and this is exactly uh the opposite of what gardenia is gardenia kind of manages to always balance the cold and the hot it's like a temperature balancer it it's really really good so i start the day off with this one then i move on to i kind of take it up a notch and i move into tuberose uh, jasmine and ylang ylang territories with alexander mcqueen the eau de parfum now this little beauty here this little beauty uh, is fascinating Ah, so I, I, this is going to be interesting. Let's just layer all of them. This is going to be really gross. Uh, we did Gardenia. I'm just going to put a little spritz of McQueen on top. Ah, okay. So this one, I do prefer the Eau de Parfum to the Pure Perfume. Uh, I don't think it's in production anymore. 
Koti, I see you, darling. So Koti is the manufacturer, distributor behind this one. Alexander McQueen's Eau de Parfum. I love it. Oh, especially now. You know what? Layered with gardenia, oh, it becomes buttery. Wow, these two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this one is divine. Of course, it has that soapy, indolic aspect of the tuberose in there. Um, it has jasmine sambac in there and ylang ylang. They're all kind of night blooming flowers. So there's that kind of vision of, and feel of night. Of course, it smells synthetic. Of course, it's an artificial fragrance. But the nightmarish visions of Alexander McQueen also had something very, like a synthetic touch to them. So it's really, really beautiful to smell this. I know this perfume was released posthumously. Alexander McQueen never smelled this perfume. This perfume was released after he passed away. So it's not like we can say, oh, Alexander McQueen approved of this fragrance. But whoever created it did a good job at rendering a haunting vision of a modern day industrial revolution type of romanticism. And it really works for me. I really, really enjoy this fragrance. And I kind of fall in and out of love with it. And I, I can spend months and months and months without ever using it. But then all of a sudden it hits me and I start craving it like crazy. And it's it's basically what's happening right now. Mm. Really, really beautiful. Delicate. And it, this is the OG. Then they start, then they did like uh, a white version, like a white knight or something version. And then they started doing all of the niche editions of like, Osmanthus, da, 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 they made like 50 of them. But this is the OG one that's not niche. This was a mass-released Coty fragrance, which has been discontinued because it wasn't really selling, I guess. Really cool. So then I move on to number three. And number three is kind of like in the dead of day. The days are shorter anyway because it's winter. And then you're like kind of then it might be snowing or raining, winds howling. I mean, it can have a romantic, like the vision can be romantic, but it can also be sometimes depressing. And when you feel that pressure of, of life just being meh, <laughs> you go into territory, into Guerlain territories, and you go, I go for Ensomitique. I was told not to pronounce the S of Ensens. So it's just Ensomitic. All right. So this one. Uh, <laughs> poopy indolic ambergris with a ton of roses. And let's add it on top of the oh my god, this is this is this this combo is going to be such a mystery, having all of these perfumes layered on top of each other. Child, let me tell you. Wow. <laughs> okay. Fascinating, though, how the rose and the ambergris in this one blends with the tuberose of McQueen and then of the um, gardenia of gardenia. The incense is in here is very pronounced, very dry. Um, it's a perfume of death, of a vision of death and depth and ocean and water and um, stillness and silence and contemplation of infinity through the eyes of a finite creature, because we are not infinite. We are finite. I don't know if our spirits get to live beyond our bodily uh, existences, but once the body kicks the bucket, chances are it's over. But if it's not, more power to us, right? Except who knows how it is if there is an afterlife out of the body. If there is, it might be super good, it might be super bad, or it might be just meh. We don't know until we don't experience it. And, and Somitik delivers that notion of the experience of afterlife. 
But not really afterlife in terms of what happens once you're there in the afterlife. No, it's more of a feeling of that trajectory, that passage between life and death. It's that thin line that connects the two. And that's on Samitik. It's a mythical incense with a heavy, poopy, true ambergris, not synthetic. Even though a lot of you, a lot of people are going to say it's synthetic, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy but delicate one. That is my number three. Now, then of course, you know, February wouldn't be February kind of, you know, without opium. <laughs> Now, this one I'm not going to put on because I would have to just, you know, it's a. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I love how it just hangs off like that. This is the pure perfume. Cha, let me tell you, cha. Okay, well, opium in the, the pure perfume concentration has unfortunately been discontinued as of last year. So I've heard sad news, but that's that's just what it is. So uh, if you do manage to grab uh, still a 15 mil, if you find one, get it. It's a beauty. It is a incensey, patchouli, ambery civity, musky, <laughs> clove, rose, like you name it, cedary concoction, and everything, all the smokes of the Orient envisioned and kind of put into this bottle to the 70s creation. And it is just the warmest vision of, of the past and the future blending together, merging together. It's just amazing. And this thing is, um, I sometimes really like to use it in summer as well, but winter is kind of that silence and solitude and isolation in the middle of winter, like, and then you need like some sort of moment of luscious sensuality. It's opium. It warms the senses and it cradles and loves them. It's a poetic perfume. It's not an aggressive synthetic type of perfume. This this one makes sense. This one is, um, I want to say, also medicinal in the way. It, it Sometimes it can smell quite medicinal on the skin. Very, very fascinating. So, <sighs> opium is number four. Ding, 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 ding. Number five, as we kind of descend into the night and kind of we're going into night blooming plants again and we're going into Dior's addict oh my gosh look half of it is gone oh uh, look how it reflects the lots you got the lots ah oh, this is where it's at the eau de parfum Mm. The night blooming Cheros or Sirius or the uh, queen of the night, the cactus that blooms once in a blue moon and just for an hour or so they say and then it's gone. Oh man, Dior's addict. Oh, the vanilla in here. I mean, oh my gosh. Oh. I'm not going to layer it on top. This one, you know what? Let, let's just give it, let's just give it its own arm. Oof. That green opening. That, okay. You, you start with this green, fresh opening, particularly in the more modern reformulations of it. Mr. Francis Kurjan, bring this one back to, 
a warmer place where it used to be in the OG version. If you can, please do so. Thank you very much. But even in this iteration, 2014 formulation that I have, it starts green just as, just as the day is about to end. And then as it develops on the skin, it kind of descends into the night and it becomes more dangerous, but warm and luscious and desire. It smells of desire. It is that night blooming Sirius or the queen of the night in here. Oh, this and this bottle, you guys, again, Y2K era, you know, the 2000s. Um, this, the, you know, John Galliano was still a Dior. Um, the design of the lipsticks was created with the little, you know, turn thing. So the perfume also, Addict came out also in that same bottle. This whole design of this kind of night blue. It's so 2000s. It's so John Galliano with his, with his visions of the Orient uh, re-envisioned for uh, Dior and then Thierry Vassa designing this perfume. Um, mm. uh. Yeah, 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 Jesus. The cactus in Addict smells amazing. We need an extreme version of Addict with amped up green notes and lots of orange blossom. Make it dark AF. Yas queen. Living for it. Hey, Rich Mitch. Mm. Rich Mitch says, opium as a teen is bold. Blonde and Shadi says, yay, opium wore that as a teenager. Uh. Oh, this is delicious. Um, the bottle reminds me of number five eau de toilette. Ah, the elongated one. Yes, except that one has now a magnet on it. But no, I mean, they're, they're different. Dior has that tacky, you know, that kind of tacky moment there. You know, the OG version, which I also have of Addict, had gold hardware. Hardware. Then they turned it into silver later on. But it was kind of, actually, all of these bits were gold before. And this thing would turn. So you would unlock Addict. The sprayer would be here. When you unlock it, you push this in. And then the spritz comes out of there. But then they've changed that whole mechanism. And now it's actually a lid. But it does say Dior in it. It's kind of hard to... There it is. You can see how it says Dior. Um, so this thing to go to bed at night. This is the let's go to sleep type of perfume. You know what? Let me just for the sake of it. Let me... Because we layered all of them together. Let me, let me give it a little spritz on the layer. The fifth perfume. Wow, on top of the others. This is insane when you combine them. It smells like some hyper ass niche fragrance that will kill you. Oh, this is good. <laughs> I would never buy this perfume. <laughs> I mean, these five together in one. It's a mess, but it's it's a glorious mess. Mm. Blonde and Chatty says, Jacob, did you just say poopy or did I miss here? No, yeah, I said poopy about uh, Ensemble Mythique. It has uh, ambergris, which is a poopy, indolic smell. It's the intestinal smell of a sperm whale. And uh, it smells accordingly. It has that depth of smell in it. Um, hmm. Oh, and it's, you know what? It's also smoky. I, I guess because now I combined it with Ensemble Mythique, so it has a little bit of incense added to Addict, but it has like a leathery, smoky touch in there as well. It, it's really gorgeous. So these five combined and what it all means, I will let you know all of that in the um, exclusive video for my Tier 2 members and patrons which I will be filming next Saturday. So let me know in the comment sections down below what your favorite uh, five perfumes for the month of February 2022 are, or any month, really, depending on when you're watching this video. 
and uh, thumb up this video while you're at it, will ya? And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you to all my code chatters um, who have uh, chatted with me during this video. Addict would lever well with uh, incense Avignon. Yes, it would be really good with a Comme des Garçons Avignon. Uh, where is it? Somewhere here. Rockstar has become a member. Oh, renewed membership for four months. Uh, four month membership renewed since four months a member. Thank you so much, Rockstar, for renewing the membership. Um, Addict, Addict would really, really, really uh, merge well with Avignon. I just don't have... Oh, do I? Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's just try it out. Let me just add I have a little bonus, little bonus feature here. Oh my God, Avignon is also amazing. Okay, we layered the two. Oh, you know what? It turns a little bit soapy, like detergent smell. But that's you know because Avignon goes into that into that direction if it's kind of it's unstable it can if you mix it with other stuff mm, maybe in the dry down <laughs> in the top notes it smells like toilet detergent <sighs> um eh not so sure this works. I mean, in theory, you would think, yeah, of course it works. But now that I'm smelling it, you know, the the, the crazy thing about Avignon is um, um, Avignon is a, is a very cold fragrance. It is it is it is freezing cold. It's it's a very rare type of incense. Because incense usually smells warm, but Avignon smells cold. But Addict smells hot. So when you blend the two, they clash, actually. Uh, and you get this weird detergent smell. Now, maybe in the dry down, it's going to change into something else. But right now, I'm not really feeling it. On this arm, however, whoo, child, that mix of opium, gardenia, ensemble mythique, um, McQueen, and addict, <laughs> there's a, let me tell ya, there is a gang bang going on all over my body on this side of the body. <laughs> so well, let's just leave it at that. Let's just go and feel our oats some more. Bye. <laughs> never forget to never give up on love. Subscribe to my channel. Mwah.